Hello and welcome to another episode of Industry Celebrities. My name is Kimberly Scott. Industry Celebrities is a podcast where I interview industry professionals in any industry, and my guest today will be a witness to this, and I ask them questions about their industry or their passion, plus my guests will share a little bit of advice to their younger self. If you want to tune into other episodes, you can do so by going to thatkimberly.com. Scroll all the way down and you can choose where you want to listen to the podcast, whether it's on iTunes, Spotify, Google, YouTube, and now Amazon Alexa. Mm. Yeah. So with that out of the way, I'm going to introduce my guest, Mr. John Bauer. Hey. Hi. Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Well, I appreciate you joining me and being brave enough to be on my podcast. Well. Even though you have no idea what I asked you to do. I don't. I'm still figuring out along the way. And we'll, okay. just, we'll start off by saying that the only celebrity in this room is you. Whatever. Stop. It's a true story. <laughs> Anywho, since you and I go way back, you got to tell my listeners a little bit about yourself and how we know each other. I know Kimberly from the days. You know, the days of the Great Recession in 2008. <laughs> When everybody and their mother was stressing out about funding and getting their product to market. 2008. Yeah, she was with Capture the Market, and I was with this company that nobody could pronounce, and nobody understood. It was called IRIO, I-R-I-O. If you Google it, it is actually an African potato batch of uh, like a meal, like a dish. And I actually went to an African wedding and had IRIO, and I freaked out. And I was okay. like, this is IRIO, and IRIO is our company, which, is it still around? It is. I have no idea, but they yeah. did texting. That's the they point. Did they did texting. Yes, we did right? texting. And I met you at a trade show, and I felt really bad for you because <laughs> <laughs> oh, he tell. used the word complex, folks. <laughs> oh, I had a complex. <laughs> so we know each other from back in the day of the apartment business. And you, you didn't see? like me. That's true, but I love you now. You're absolutely right, but that's because you were right <laughs> out of college and you were that. Different, do tell. Do, different person in different. your 20s. I was in your 20s. Come on. Come on. Your brain isn't even fully formed until you're 25. It's a, it's a scientific fact. Is it really? Yeah. Google it. Then yours was late? Yes. Because <laughs> I was like 27 or 28. Yeah. You. Thank you. No. It was just different. It was a different time and you definitely matured in the 10 years that I've since 2008. Oh, um, so much to wear. But hey, to your credit, within a month or two, I didn't know you when I met you, but Within six months, I adored you, would you not say? Well, at least I thought you were a lot cooler six than Six months to like a year. Yes. But I had like the, the haircut with like the, it was like the mullet thing with like the faux hawk. You did. You were and Friday boy style. And pleated pants. Yes. Uh, and then I got married later on, thank God. Thank because goodness. I dressed for, like a yes, for your beautiful wife. <laughs> tool. So thank you, baby. <laughs> so what industry are you in now? So I went from multifamily and student housing and I actually planted a church in Dallas, Texas. So that was uh, around my 30th birthday party is when we announced it. It was like 2010. And, uh, and so you went from multifamily to your the industry would be called that you're in now would be called church planting. Church planting. Yes. Okay. I didn't yeah. know that was a thing. That's a thing. I There's just thought when somebody wanted to start a church they started a church and it was called starting a church. Yeah, but you know how like entrepreneur became really like cool yes. and hipster. So did the word church planning. And there's that podcast. It's called Startup. They actually did uh, like a five part deal on church oh, planning. Okay. So, yeah, it's like a cool hip way of saying I'm starting a church. Okay. And you know, of course, our mutual friend John Hinckley. Yes. Shout out. John Shout Hinkley. out, John, founder and president of Modern Massage. <laughs> Is that what it's actually called? No. Hey, that he's, that's going to be funny. Modern I, which message. Which I've invited him many times when his busy schedule clears up a little bit, he'll be on this. When but he's you, not in a Learjet. You, you, you made it here before. I did. Well, I'm, well, I'm hey. a big deal, So yes. and you are, and that's why we're here. No. But John was like, don't do it. He don't said? start another church in Dallas, because the part that you didn't know, I guess you know, you'd written some questions, and it was like, one of the questions, rather, was, what are you passionate about? And it was people. People are like incredible and fascinating, and as my friend Rachel Chester says, they're, they're messy, people are messy. And so people were fascinating to me, and everyone that I knew and came in contact with oftentimes treated themselves and others just like crap. Mm -hmm. So yes, I was what I would call a Donnie in my early 20s, a Donnie Dallas, a $30,000 millionaire. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I had like this passion for people that wouldn't go away and I couldn't stop it and I couldn't hide it. And so I'd be in multifamily selling stuff or speaking at conferences and then like this passion for people would come out and be like, dude, y'all are incredible. And I would try and encourage the people. I remember being at a management conference and I just got lit up. I was like, you guys, like y'all matter so much. Do you see how like incredible like your job is? And I'm talking like apartment managers who are like, overseeing a multi-million dollar property with all of these precious people that have been sent to the University of Austin at Texas. And like, you know, a lot of times people just, I've noticed that they treat themselves or others just like junk. And so I would get in there and try and like yeah. encourage them and believe in them, so. And, and I think that because when we first met back to that point, that until you got to know you, like you didn't know that that was really you, because that's always been really you. So now that really makes a lot more sense why you would go into the church. Yeah, it, it's weird from like business. church planning is obviously at least should be somewhat spiritual, but the people I relate the most to are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So I can go in a room with guys that look like they're might be coked out or something because they're just worn out. And I'm like, <laughs> the <laughs> people that are hustling and just grinding and working so hard because they believe in this, this passion project they're working in. And I really relate to that. It's just that my industry is not necessarily lucrative unless you make it big and have yes. a mega church, which I was never really going for. So, yeah. so anyway, in my 20s, yeah, Normandy Church okay. here in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. But the precursor to that was we just met like all over the place. We actually started in downtown Dallas right by the WAC. I and no, I think I went to go visit a year after I heard, because I didn't believe it when I heard that you oh, left yeah. John to go. And I was like, are you joking? Are you serious? What? Yeah. And, and then when I oh, saw yeah, you, you preach, yeah, 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 when I saw you preach, you guys were over off of Criswell at the bottom of another church of a bigger, yeah. or, or maybe it was a school, a, pri a little small private school. But I just remember sitting there going, OMG, wow. You know, like you definitely spoke to me and I always have a hard time finding a good church home. And I definitely felt like, I can't believe I, I know John. I can't believe that was John that just said all those things, you know, mm. just so I can definitely People hindsight, change. I think back. Well, you involved into like what mm. you really were excited about and you know, you became becoming, yeah, you becoming. Mm. Yes. But in your thirties, I always like to tell people that, you know, in our twenties, we're thinking and doing things differently. We learn from those things. And in our thirties, we think and do things in a different, like we evolve each time we become a better person of ourselves and striving to be mm -hmm. and do more. So I, I feel like you definitely accomplished that. So Thank you. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what did you enjoy the most about church planting? You remember the old video game, Skate or Die? Jeez. Was it on Atari? No, I think it was Nintendo. Oh, I stopped after Atari. Yeah. <laughs> I'm that old. <laughs> yeah, but this video game, it was called Skate or Die, and so we changed it to Vision or Die. And like, I personally felt so much vision that I, at times I wouldn't be able to sleep. Like, yeah. I felt like my heart was about to beat out of my chest. I know I'm what like, that I can like. see the mountaintop. We're minutes away from getting there, and that part wasn't true, but I could still see the mountaintop, and you know, the hardest part over the years is keeping that. Yeah, in any startup. But what did you enjoy the most about Oh yeah, the vision part. You enjoyed the vision, the having the vision and Having the, the vision, and, and then processing it. it, and then also seeing other people's visions come to life, whether I sit with other people and help them kind of figure out their own purpose and passion, and oftentimes it was like facing their demons, you yeah. know, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And so out of those like dark places and other people where the light bulb goes off or they get something spiritually or they get something with their spouse or with the person they're dating or with work. And then you're there for that moment and like these really sweet moments that not a lot of people see and that aren't on Facebook Live. It's really powerful. Like yeah. you, you made a deep impact on people's lives. So that's part of the thing I was most fond of is being a part of something that was life changing for them. So how did you go from multifamily to church planning? Okay. So when I was at Erio, I'm obsessed with why, like the question why, why are we doing this? And so we had this texting program that was new and hip and everybody we talked to, like the good old boys that, you know, didn't understand. Didn't understand. They're like, my daughter had 3000 text messages last month and it cost me a quarter of a million dollars but they didn't know what to do with it. So I actually one day I was like trying to sell it, but I couldn't figure out why we had it. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote it down, I wrote down the vision and I was like, the whole purpose of these texting, this platform is to connect to people and uh -huh. people are naturally like born. They like, they cannot help their desire to connect with someone else. We're wired for it. 
And so I began to see that in the industry when I would go around, I would be more obsessed about like figuring out the person's wiring and how they're made and how to encourage them than I was on selling. But when I did that, then they would sell and they wouldn't. Or they would buy from they you, would, you would They would sell, buy, yeah. yeah, they would buy what I was selling and they wouldn't fire us, which is also great because yeah. we were still working on technology at that point. Because you're a relationships type of person. You, yeah. wanted, you truly wanted to know about them yeah. as the person and then also find the solution, a solution sells individual yeah. that you weren't just going to sell them you were yeah. very much like me like if they didn't, didn't need care. it you weren't going to sell it you know yeah. or you weren't going to try and push something that they didn't need on them yeah and so it got to the point when that became like my main focus and that was my hobby on the side my uh, side hustle that i couldn't just be in the industry anymore i couldn't just be at erio anymore i had to get out and try it full time and so that process took about a year and a half and i announced it at 30 we planted, meaning we started at 31 in 2012-ish. And yeah, I've been running with a few hiccups, but still running ever since, so. Well, that's pretty amazing. Thank you. Hats off to you, son. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, my one standing question for this podcast is, what would you tell your younger self? This one was a doozy. I actually thought about this a lot and you can do it in parts cuz I have three I have advice to my 20s I have advice to my 30s and now that I'm 45 years young I, I have advice to my 40s so feel free the main thing I thought about was I recently just went through something it was probably one of the biggest life changes that I've been through and and we've been through a lot my wife and I've been through it a ton from infertility to foster care to planning a church to seeing like your best friends leave the church, highs and lows all over the place. And a friend of mine, when I told him I wanted to plant a church, he was like, you know, okay, good. But just know this is going to take a chunk of your soul. You're going to lose part of your soul. And wow, that's very strange, but <laughs> well, it's like, it's just going to cost a lot. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. You know what it's like. Oh, yeah, you started it up. It's, you yeah, it's your being. But for a church, I mean, I, I guess because now that I know someone, I know you well enough and know some of behind the stories that it's like a business. You have to get it off the ground. You know, it's, even though it's a nonprofit, it still takes money to run, mm -hmm. you know, volunteers to run it. And so but it does. I see I see that now. But the analogy together was just, is just yeah, the, different for me. For I guess. us, we were... Blessed is yes. what they say on TBN. We were blessed, so mm -hmm. we didn't have a ton of financial problems. We weren't, you know, a mega church. But anyway, but that's not the point. But it's not, your friends the, the said soul it would take part. Yeah, take, part. It would take a chunk of your soul. What that means is, is like when you bleed and die and cry and go visit with people, and then they leave because they're like, ah, I found a better one. I feel more connected, or you're mm -hmm. not that good at this, and so like your identity kind of gets, you know, I was Normandy, and Normandy was me. And that's it's not healthy personal. either. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like starting a business that when a client fires you or an employee leaves you. They didn't fire Capture the Market. They, they fired yeah, Kimberly yeah, Scott. Yeah. yeah. No, eventually it was just Capture the Market. But yeah. <laughs> I took it personally in the first five years or yeah. six. For sure. I so get it. the advice I would give myself is that this is really going to hurt. So enjoy the little things. And I feel like I've learned that in my 30s. And what I mean by that is just gratitude. I've come up with some new rules for living for my own life and I want to say this like Matthew McConaughey uh, being is greater than doing you know <laughs> like, like you're being like the essence of who you are as a man or a woman is more important than what you do or what you produce and that's a flip for me because yeah. I was like doing all of the time and so like mm -hmm. being with the boys being with my wife being in the moment being present yes which is not easy because no, I can see hard. the future and I'm ready to get there yeah. yesterday so yeah. so this is gonna hurt so you might as well just learn to be that's yeah. what I would tell myself but myself wouldn't listen and then I'd still be here saying that again so I would not listen at all unfortunately well none of us listen I know just in the past I'd say last 10 years have I had the epiphany or the ahas of going back and asking my best friend or even asking my boyfriend, did we do that? Did, did I say that, uh, Rita, did I, did I treat my mom that way? Or did mm -hmm. I treat my dad that way? And she's like, oh yeah, we did that. We did those things yeah, because reality. reality check, you know, and just had a conversation with one of my nieces yesterday that we only want the best for you. You know, I know it feels like that we're telling you don't, 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 or that we're, and we're not disappointed in you, but we worry about you. And 
but you're going to figure it out just like we did. We didn't know any better. We just went along and, and you, it's trial and error. It's a process. And yeah. so that hard part you said, you talked about reality. My counselor says mental health is the commitment to reality at all costs. Mm -hmm. And so when your friends and your family come and tell you, Hey, you need to kind of check yourself. It's mm -hmm. really hard to hear. And yeah. Anyway, but those are the people that really love you. Mm -hmm. The people that will tell you who this is the analogy. I only used to hang out and I, say that when I was in my 20s with girls who would tell me if my my butt looked fat in my jeans you know you want the people that are gonna say to you the things of the hardest but because they love you they mm. tell you out of love not for any other reason but but because they love you mm -hmm. you know and it's a tough thing for them I'm sure and it's a tough thing for you to take I'm the same way it's hard for me for somebody to tell me chill out Kimberly it's gonna be okay or just take a deep breath Kimberly it's not the end of the world you know for whatever it is I mean that was my 30s I overacted all the time in my <laughs> 30s but um, I can't relate. <laughs> but that's great advice because I feel like if we don't give ourselves little bitty warnings or we are not open to hearing that it's not easy, but be present in whatever it is, then I feel maybe it won't hurt as much, but it's all relative to you know the situation. Coming out of Baylor, I don't judge me, but I went to Baylor. <laughs> I like the way you left that out in the beginning, but. Yeah, <laughs> and back in the day, this shows you how far we've come financially, I guess, but I was like, I'm gonna be making $60,000 a year right out of college, and I was waiting tables, uh -huh. and then I got a job that paid me a little less than 15, I guess. Uh-huh. Anyway, I made like $30,000 my first year out of college or something like that. I literally was a $30,000 millionaire. <laughs> but I don't know, I, well, I don't even know why I'm talking about that, other than the fact that in the startup place, you've got like this expectation that's going to be X, Y, and Z, and then it often isn't, and so you have to grind. Yes. And it is not. And you can still make plans, but then you can make plans, and, and God has plans for you, so it doesn't matter what plans you make if you... Or sometimes you're just stupid, and you trip and fall, and then someone else <laughs> can get back up. <laughs> both. I think both. But it is definitely a trial and error, but you have to love the process, and I feel like... That's a good one. Yeah. Love the process in whatever it is. You know, it doesn't matter. Mm. You know, if it's getting into shape or starting a business, starting a church, or teaching someone something, mm -hmm. it's a process. And if you don't enjoy it, then you shouldn't do it. I did learn that from my 40s to a little work-life balance is the best and mm. only do things that you love. I mean, because if you don't love it, why spend time doing it, you know? Mm. So it's, it's something that that we all have to learn the hard way. So I love the advice that you're giving your younger self, John. Way to go. Yeah. Listen to me, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for sharing with industry celebrities listeners. Tell listeners how they can connect with you or get in touch with you. So Kimberly has just convinced me to get back on <laughs> to social media. I've kind of taken hiatus. I'm on Instagram. Oh. Are you? I have a thing, but I, I got to sign What's your in. handle? All of them are the same. It's like John S. Bauer. Okay. So John Twitter Bauer. I love is my favorite, okay. but I really don't tweet. But and I just fired up my LinkedIn, LinkedIn so I'm going to get that ramped up again because of our conversation okay, last good. week. So I would say LinkedIn and Twitter and then Instagram, okay. and they're all John S. Bauer. Okay. That's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you joining me. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Remember, if we've brought you value today, please share this let others know you can also follow me on facebook twitter snapchat linkedin and instagram until next week stay positive and remember sharing is caring thanks john thank you